I Heart Art is proudly brought to you by Art Shed Online. For art supplies of all kinds at great prices, visit Australia's number one art supplier at artshedonline.com.au. Hey guys, you're watching I Heart Art. My name's Emma Morgan and I'm a wildlife illustrator. And today we're going to keep continuing with this Eastern Grey Kangaroo that I started last week. I filled it in and it's nearly finished, but we're going to just add some final details, some extra line work. I'm going to show you how I do eyes and then we're going to go over a little bit of watercolour. I'm just going to put the um, heavier lines over it first. So I usually use a pen, it's a much bigger nib than the last one. So this is a 0.5 or a 0.8. So I think I'm just going to start with the five. Line weight's really important because it helps get the image to look slightly less flat. Like you don't want it to look like a flat drawing. If you look, if you follow a reference, you can kind of see, like it kind of tells you where to put lines. Like we're aiming for really dark spots. Like in here, around the eyes or around the cheek or under here, whereas I've already started adding a lot of black. So, same thing, just lots of tiny lines and you can kind of bring it out a little bit. You'd be surprised at what a difference it makes when you just help with this sort of thing. Maybe around the eyes too. I notice a lot of people when they start drawing, like they get really focused on trying to get details exact and you don't have to do that like you can just imply it you know it can just you can just be a gesture of fur like I don't try and draw every single little tiny fur on the kangaroo because you don't need to it's still working as it is it's just about the texture and getting that light and dark which is why the line weight's so important I'm just going to do it at the back of the ear too it doesn't have to be like one continuous line. You can just add little bits like I am here. I do recommend this as like the last step as well because by this point in the drawing, you've kind of worked yourself out now. And again, I just work the whole drawing as one. I just go over the whole thing and add it wherever I need it. And sometimes, you know, you feel like you're finished and then you go back in again and that's okay too. I'll give him some whiskers. So I'm just gonna, when I do that, I'm just gonna flick this pen out. Cause we want the end to be pointy. We don't want it just to be one big fat flat line cause that's not gonna work. So I started dotting these in before, but I'm just going to go over them again so you can see them. And you really, when you put lines like this in, you really want to like imagine like the kangaroo's face and then try and follow the shape of it and curve it around a bit. And you can use this like bigger pen to, like I go right in the middle of the really dark spots and it just helps a little bit down here. The fur's a little bit coarser down here, so I've really, like, this is the way I draw, but you can kind of almost scribble. <laughs> I'm just adding a bit of dark again. Again, I'm just following my picture, like this is really black over here, so I'm just going to make sure I focus this pen this side to darken it. To do eyeballs, <laughs> which I think are really interesting to watch people draw. Um, again, like it took me a while to figure out how to do it with pen because it's, um, it's a different texture because you want them to look watery and also still round. So his eyes are quite dark. So I just like to figure out where the pupil might be. And I just make myself a little line. 
And then also, you can usually see where light's reflecting, and that's where, you, again, it's like, as I was explaining before, you're trying to layer to get, like, the pen to blend well. So you have to be light around the light and dark. I try and be dark around the bottom, maybe, to try and make it look round. So again, I'm just going to focus on darkening where I think the pupil will be. And I do use a variety of different size pens to going in with a small pen. And we'll just build it up. So I'm just going to follow the shape of the eye down the bottom because that's where I think it's going to be darkest. Sometimes photographs don't translate well as drawings. I would say that to you if you're if you are working from a reference, you can have a little bit of creative freedom with these things. And sometimes, yeah, if you're looking at it and you're like, eh, it just doesn't look right, even though I have followed this photo, it's okay not to follow the photo. That's the point of making it into a drawing. It's a different medium completely. Focusing on making around duck. good to have a few references to work off as well like this is quite hard to see off for his eyes the one I'm looking at but I feel like his pupils might be quite big so I do have a couple down here that I was looking at before as well these are all quite black though so we're just winging it don't be afraid to take your time with this sort of thing because it can make or break the drawing and sometimes I just do some really light lines over there so it's not quite white and stuck. I reckon that's looking pretty good. And then we do the same on the other side. And this is a little bit blacker. But same principle, just want to follow. I'm not pressing hard, obviously. This takes a lot of practice too. Like, don't think this is just like magic in, you know, half an hour or anything. Like, I've been drawing since I was like a fetus. So, and then I went to university and I had lots of other artists teach me how to draw. Um, it's really good to learn from other people. Like, don't assume that you know it all. Other artists can give you a lot of value. And drawing's always about comment, so don't worry if it's not perfect and if it's not super representational, because you're trying to say something with it. That's the most important thing with artwork. So that's how we add details to the eyes. Um, we're going to take a little break, and when we come back, I'm going to show you how to do some more detail and some watercolour. See you soon. Welcome back to I Heart Art. I'm Emma, and we're going to do some watercolour on our little kangaroo friend. While we were having a little break, I was sketching in some potential spots to put some florals in this drawing. I've decided it might need a little something extra and that's totally okay to add more stuff as you go. As I started the drawing, like just really rough pencil sketch and um, I'm going to look, just look at my little palette and work out some colours. This is my little travel palette. My dad gave this to me when I was 16 and I still have it. Not super fancy, just mix colours all over it and it's a mess and I love it. Um, so first I'm just going to put a wash over the kangaroo. So when we say a wash, it's like very watery, just a little bit of pigment just to give it a bit of colour. Um, so not super heavy. There's, I don't feel like there's a right or wrong way to paint with watercolour. I personally like it to be watery. So it's like an accidental thing I figured out at uni that I could paint over watercolour and it actually works really well. <laughs> Um, that's the importance of using these um, Copic 
pens because they they won't run when you put colour over them. So sometimes when I do this, I just start in patches. So I'm just going to start with this like blue colour over a place where it's dark, just so I can test the waters first. Just helps sometimes a little bit of colour. Not every drawing needs it for sure. After I studied fine art, I did interior design for a little while and they, we had to use those Copic markers to colour stuff, but I always preferred doing mine in watercolour. Definitely enjoyed interior design, but I landed my first solo show in Fitzroy at Red Gallery and I never looked back. And it was all a big accident, as I think life kind of is <laughs> sometimes. Just a super subtle blue, and you can totally layer it. Yeah, if you are having trouble blending with a pen, you can just add a little bit of watercolour. Gouache is good, and acrylic's good too. If you don't have watercolour, you can just really water down acrylic paint. So if I don't add much water, then the colour becomes a lot stronger. And will I add a little bit? The nose, just to tie it in a bit. Not that kangaroos have blue noses, or maybe they do. And if you think you put too much on, like I just did then, you can just wipe it off. Or you can add more water to get it off too. So watercolour is very forgiving. These synthetic brushes are much better to use for watercolour too. The bristle ones won't hold it, um, water at all. A little bit of brown in his eyes, if I can mix the right one. It's good to restrict your palette because it means you can't go too crazy when you make artwork and the colours just are not blending together. Which happens sometimes. Trying to darken this brown a little bit. You can see. We're going to take a little break, and when we come back, I'm going to add some extra little watercolour details to our kangaroo friend. Welcome back, you're watching I Heart Art and we're just going to add some little watercolour details to our kangaroo. Um, I was just showing my little palette before. And I think I'm going to base the watercolour details on this little native that I had lying around in my studio. Um, as I was saying before, when you add stuff like this, you don't necessarily have to make like a really detailed drawing it can just be like it can just imply something um, so we're just going to use the watercolor I might add a little bit of pen we'll just see how we go um, I'm going to go in with a bigger brush so before I sketch like just some little circles just so I can give myself a guide of where I might put things which is important because you don't want it to look too whack it's okay to make a mess of your watercolor palette for sure Really watery, and I'm just gonna I like it when the color runs, I think it's really fun. I did a workshop with um, Sherry Hood, who's a watercolour painter, does portraits, and she's pretty famous for doing that. 
and um, she really encouraged it <laughs> when I was there because I'm so messy. So. And sometimes adding a detail like this just gives the work a little, I don't know, sometimes works just need a little extra like this and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they really like being black and white and simple. It's good to just give everything a go. So before I go in with more colour, just let it sit for a bit. It's why I kind of work in thin layers. And when the watercolour dries, it leaves really cool marks on the paper as well. Um, we could add some of that blue to our kangaroo too. Let that drip a bit. That's fun. If you know where you want the paint to drip down, you can kind of put some water and then add the colour as well. like that. And again, once it dries, you can just go over it in pen again if you need to, or if you need to add. I might bring this down a little bit, maybe, if it needs it. It is worth using paper that can take watercolour as well. This is a, um, what is this, Jaffon? It's really silky. Um, doesn't hold water as well as another brand like Arches which is kind of designed for that. So that's worth investigating if you're going to do watercolour or, or any kind of painting. You don't want it to buckle too much. It is starting to, but it will hold it. So I might swap brushes. What have I got here? This one. Something a bit more pointed. I have this like rusty colour, which is cool. And I'm just going to give it some red. see how it looks. You can wipe it off if it's not working. We'll add more water. That's the thing with watercolour, you can just blend colours together. You don't have to be too meticulous with it, just give it what it needs. I'll add some leaves, maybe. I'm going to go in with that same blue I used on the kangaroo as my base for my green, just to try and tie it together a bit. It's really loose. Yeah, I don't want to give it too much green. I don't think it needs it. Might just be letting it dry a little bit and then having a look at it then. You might have noticed too that I've worked the drawing in this corner and the other thing I would say is like if you're drawing something and it ends up in the corner or it's like really weirdly placed, you just crop the page down. Like don't freak out if it doesn't fit your paper or anything like that. And make sure you do crop it to help it as well. Like composition really helps the drawing. So afterwards I would definitely cut this down. One down here.
So I reckon this little guy is about ready to hop off the page. He's all done or pretty close to. If you'd like to see maybe a future update on him or any of my other animal friends, you can check me out at www.emmamorgan.com.au. Thank you for watching I Heart Art. I Heart Art is proudly brought to you by Art Shed Online. For art supplies of all kinds at great prices, visit Australia's number one art supplier at artshedonline.com.au.